we have the sun catcher thing that this is inspired by a project that Marsha Volk, I believe is her name. I hope it, I'm getting right, but it's on the jelly arts um, YouTube channel. And she did it with uh, clear uh, No, she did it with clear contact paper. Well, I found I didn't have contact paper. Um, so I decided to use clear packing tape and it works fabulously. So that's how we're going to do this today is with clear packing tape. But if you have contact paper, clear you want something transparent and sticky i think also scotch tape will work you know if you have a one inch wide it would just you'd have more bands but i don't really see much the seams on these on the it's barely visible so i'm not worried about it so if you want to complete this with to me today here's what you need but if you don't have a frame and all that stuff don't worry about it you can still make the sun catcher without the the frame you can use this for a journal cover you can use it for all kinds of things but i'm going to make it, i'm going to show you how i did this all the way so what you need um is if you want to do a sun catcher i just bought a cheap frame this is a five by seven uh has a five by seven mat but it's really a six by eight you can get anything you want two pieces of glass but if you don't have that just the sun catcher is going to be really cool on its own so i'm going to Give, tell you about what I'm using for today's project. I've got a, this time I'm going to use my little 5x7 jelly plate. If you have an 8x10, you can do an 8x10 if you have any size you want, because it's really not about the size of the plate necessarily. I just think it's fun that I happen to already have a 5x7 plate. But whatever you've got, you know, large, is fine. You also need, if you have some stencils, if you have pre-made, or if you have your own, you know, DIY stencils, some stencils would be great because we're going to do a couple of fun techniques that I just kind of going to experiment with and we're going to try. Um, for paints, if you have anything that's transparent, kind of a combination of transparent colors and opaque colors. So I'm going to tell you what I've got. Um, if you look, it doesn't, if you don't have, have golden, that's fine. You can use heavy body like from a tube or you can use um, these, but I'm going to use some transparent colors like quinacridone violet i've got quinacridone crimson any of the quinacridones are transparent um you also a pyrrole orange is also transparent because it shows you know they show you can even tell um the difference like this is a teal and that's opaque see how it covers up the black lines so that's opaque i'm going to still use it but i'm not going to use it as my main it's going to be accents for accents only but my main colors i want very transparent colors so whatever you've got in your stash that's sort of translucent even zinc white is a translucent white you can see the difference between a zinc white and a titanium white titanium white is opaque zinc is translucent it's almost pure tra it's pretty transparent actually i mean there's a little bit of coverage but not much now i'm also going to use some black so i've got some carbon black but if whatever you have if you have some craft paints You'll still be able to make a sun catcher with just craft paints. Um, I will show you just to leave areas that aren't painted or covered, and that's going to give you the translucency. So whatever you've got, just grab all your paints. I've got quinacridone magenta. Another thing you might want to have, if you have some makeup sponges, little anything with some foam, you know, if you've got something in your stash, even a regular sponge, something that you can dab paint on with. If you don't have that, just soft brushes, like a, you know, soft, something soft. You don't want a bristle stiff brush to hit your gel plate. I'm going to use today, I'm going to use these brushes to make marks. You can use fingers to make marks. You can use string to make little patterns and marks. So whatever you've got, I also have some, uh, for afterwards, I have some hand sanitizer to clean the plate. What else do I have? I know I mentioned before packing tape or clear contact paper. I also have a piece of uh, clear, you can use a page protector or I happen to have, this was a acetate that I had, but I cut that to five by seven, but that's for later, don't need it now. Um, another thing is some scrap paper for you to brayer, if you need to brayer excess paint. And uh, I'm using a wax palette, paper palette. I'll just show you the brand just so you know. I love this stuff. It's Strathmore palette paper. I love it for putting paints down and and now I'm going to just put my we'll get started on kind of on the process now what we're going to do is we're going to create oh another thing I'm going to go with a little bit I have a little hair dryer here and I'm not going to use any heat on my um I need to dry between layers and since 
I'm not very patient. I want to, uh, I'm just using a hairdryer, but it's going to be set on a no heat setting, no heat at all on your gel plates. But um, you can use a hairdryer if you want to speed up your drying process a little bit. So first thing is I'm just going to start with layers. And the way this works is every layer that you build is going to kind of, you know, have some dimension and you'll be able to see the artwork on both sides. So we're going to build, uh, you know, maybe several layers and I'll start with more the more transparent layers that I could possibly do. So I'm going to use my quinacridone colors. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay on, uh, this happens to be five by seven too, which is brilliant, but you know, whatever you've got, you don't have to do, well, I'm gonna turn that over so you can see. You can see I already worked on it this weekend. This is I'm just gonna stick it right on my plate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some quin this quinacridone red. Or I can take the magenta. I think magenta would be pretty. There it is. Could, nope, that, which one is it? No, I don't have any. I don't have it with me. I don't know what I did. Oh, there it is. Quinacridone magenta. So it's a pretty pink color. I'm going to put some of that in my, if I can open it up. All right, got it. I'm just going to put a little bit. This is a very, this has actually got, Little is less is best in this, just so you know. I'm not going to use too much paint here. I'm going to use little uh, little light coats so that I don't have a lot of globs of paint on my plate. So I'm going to take, um, you can use a makeup sponge if you have these little triangle sponge, any nice closed cell sponge. If you don't have that, a soft brush will work too, just a soft hair brush. But I'm going to use this makeup sponge. Most of us have these types of things in our stash, I'm hoping. Um, so I'm going to dip it into my um, palette here, and I'm just making a very light, I'm not making a heavy coating, and I'm going to go into my, I'm just going to tap into my uh, plate, into the little holes of the stencil, I'm not going to go real heavy here, just light, and I want it to be, I don't want it to be thick, I don't want to have thick uh, layers here, very thin layers is the most important, but this is a transparent color, so uh, my color is going to be seen, I'll be able to see through it on the other side. So that's a good thing. If you don't have transparent colors, that's okay. Just just make, don't uh, cover too much of your plate, leaving, you want to leave some of the uh, surface areas non-colored so you can be able to see through it. Now I could do um, just a solid color like this, what I'm doing. Or if I wanted to add just for fun, well, I won't do it now, but you could just blend in another color too. But for now, I'm just going to do transparent magenta. And I'm going to try to use as much paint. I'm not wasting any of it. I am not going to waste my paint. So pretty much almost all of this is going to be used. You can see it's run, run out there. And I do need to squeeze out just a little more. But this time I'm going to grab, and I'm going to get paint all over my hands because these sponges don't really... <laughs> It's not easy to do this type of dabbing. Now these little guys, I love these, because if you, I'm gonna do a little crimson so you can see, just a little, not much. Um, these little, uh, these come from Spectrum, it's like a, I don't know, Spectrum Noir, I think, uh, who else makes them? Um, Scrapbook.com, they're little handles and they put these little foam things on the, um, now this will keep your fingers from getting, they're much easier to control than the flat ones that Ranger makes. Like maybe Rangers come out with them too. I don't know. But there, here we go. I've got a little bit of red kind of put in there too. And I'm using all of it. Now, if you want to go to a different color, like I'll go ahead and uh, I don't want to ruin this thing. I can throw this in a water bath so I don't lose it. I'm just put a little more pink in that. It needs a little violet or pink or something. Maybe the magenta. So I'm just doing a very light layer. And as I'm talking, that layer is actually drying, which is good because I don't, I really want to have um, each layer dry. So I'm just tapping, dry tapping, really trying not to, I don't want to lift my paint, I, you know, as I do this. So just kind of just making a nice even coating, but really light along this opening here. So now I've got as much, pretty much I've got the way I like it, you know, like that. And now I'm going to tap off as much as I can off of my, just tapping off as much paint as I can onto my scrap paper. And this is a fun time to take a journal. If you have a journal or something and you want to have some fun making some marks, 
you can take a just like a journal and just t do your excess. Now this, I'm going to put the rest of this little dumb thing into a water bath so that I don't lose it. And then I can just put another one on. I'm going to lift this up. And now I've got this beautiful dot pattern. I'm just going to set that aside and I'm going to let that dry. So because I'm in for time, so to save time, I'm using my dry, high, hair dryer on a no heat. No heat. I'm just blowing it dry. No, no heat, please. Yeah, you'll ruin it. If you do that, you'll ruin it. So there. Now I've got that. It's dry enough, I think. I've got this red. I might use it. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put another stencil down. But this is something I wanted to try. But i got to wait for that to dry. i got to make sure that's a dry layer. I think it is. So I have this idea I wanted to try. Um, I saw this also on, on a different project. But what I did was, if you remember, I don't know if any of you saw my YouTube, the YouTube Live we did. I'm going to show you what I did. I'm going to set this aside just a second. I'm going to move that out of the way so you can see what I'm going to do. What I'm doing is I'm going to take a, like these little, these are wax. You can use crayons. You can use just plain old crayons if you want. I'm going to just take a, uh, there we go. I'm going to take um, a stencil and I'm going to lay it on the table. And I'm going to take a piece of paper and I put it on top just like this. And what I'm going to do is do a rubbing. So I'm just going to take the side of the crayon and I'm going to rub the design of the stencil onto the to the uh, piece of paper like that. So I've got, whoops, and I shifted it. I want to try to keep it still. Oh, keep moving it. So maybe taping that down would have probably been smart. But anyway, I just want to try this. I don't know. I've never done it. I saw it and I thought, oh, I want to try it. So yeah, I want to get a sharper impression than that but because I, I moved it. So best to probably tape your paper down and then do your thing and tape your uh, tape your uh, stencil down. But so I've got one here that I did earlier. So it's nice and clean. What I plan to do is now that my little I'm going to bring in my little this is really dry enough. So that's good. Yep, it's good to go. Oops, now I got something on there. Oh, well, <laughs> I got some kind of crumb. I don't know. I just had some oatmeal. Who knows what's in there? Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. Now I'm going to take some, I think I'd like to do a transparent color. So I'm going to take a quinacridone violet, maybe not that. I'm going to do a pyro orange, something kind of bold. Karen, I'm sorry. To, sure. Did you just put something else on top of that? No. Okay. All I mean, right. On top of this, uh, this? Are you talking about my, um, my, my plate? Because all I did was just do the stencil. Um, and I'm going to start putting some color on top. So, so basically I just have that one layer that I dabbed on. And now I'm gonna take some pyro orange. This is something I've never done, so it may be a total fail, so don't try it yet. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna brayer it over this. And I'm not gonna brayer everything, I'm just gonna kind of leave, I'm doing a light brayering of, of that. Here, just kind of brayer it over it. I'm gonna take this. And I'm going to lay down. This is the stuff with the, um, I've got some, uh, that is my crayon rubbing. I'm just going to put that on and I'm really going to rub it. Oh, I hope I, I probably am going to have a feeling I'm going to lift up what was underneath, but that's okay. This is an experiment. I don't want to, that it's fun to just try. So let's see what happens. So as I'm lifting, ooh, so that pattern, so where the paint was, interesting. So I did lift. <laughs> It did lift a lot, but I got this really interesting pattern. So, and I also have a really nice print, which I really like. See where the wax, where the resist is? So, hmm, I'm going to use that for something later, but I did lift a lot of my circles and I still like it because it's kind of textured. So, I'm not going to concern myself about that. And I think that layer is pretty dry already. So, I'm going to go ahead and maybe do some more stuff. So, I'm going to take, oh, I'm going to take these, um, this, I like this pattern. I'm going to just stick it right on top like that. And I'm going to use some phthalo blue, which is a transparent color. I'm going to mix it with a little zinc white to make it so it's not perfectly so dark because phthalo is a very dark color. So I'm going to use a little tiny phthalo. There it is right there and some zinc and I'll mix it up. And I'm just going to 
Yeah, maybe a lot more zinc than I think. Okay, I'm going to mix it up, which I really didn't think about. Oh, Got to get my brayer to mix it up. So I'm just going to kind of move it around. And I'm not going to use my brayer. I'm just trying to, since I didn't bring a palette. <laughs> so I just made a nice blue color. I think that's a pretty blue. And it's kind of a medium. It's not a sky blue, but it's a nice blue. So I'm going to take my little dabber, and I'm going to do the same thing. But this time, I'm just going to dab right through the... Uh, these places in the stencil. Very light, just like I did the circles. And I'm getting a really nice uh, layering going on here. Just gonna do that. And I might even grab some more of that blue off of the off of the brayer, because I kind of overdid it on the brayer there. Okay. So just kind of, and you'll see the colors are gonna act differently when they layer over other colors. So I'm trying, I'd like to keep them in the same family. Of course, I, you know, I do, if I add yellow over the blue, it's going to turn into a green, kind of how that works. So, you know, you'll be mindful of that, that your colors are going to be um, playing off of each other, you know, because they're translucent. I'm going to put a little more phthalo, not much, but I want to darken it up just a little. I'm just going to go kind of a, just to give it a little more depth. So now I'm going to lift that off. And there, I've got that. So I've got a nice little pattern going on here. And I'm going to just dab off what I can on that. I'm going to stick that in the bath so I don't, so I can wash it later. And now I've got that layer. Now, same thing, I should let that dry with my, I'm going to hit it with the gun. Oops, no heat. Now I noticed because I did lose that the dots that I really like. I'm going to go back. This is so much fun about this. This is very calming because you don't have to wait. You're not worried about hurrying up because the paint's going to dry too quick. This is really a nice, very relaxing. I found it when I did it on yesterday. It was just very relaxing. I felt like, wow, I can do this. Um, and it didn't feel like I was in a rush or I made a big mess. I kept my mess pretty contained. I'm going to go back into that circle where I lost that that one thing that kind of I sort of needed to just give it a little more oomph. Um, do the same, but I still have the pattern underneath, which is pretty neat. So this is, it's a good thing. I'm going to take wherever I lost that circle, I'm just going to go back and get some more in there. And this is with my magenta. I just don't want to over squeeze too much paint. This technique I'm finding also uses much less paint than when you're doing other gel printing. So it's kind of a fun, it's really fun. It's very addictive. It makes, makes me want to use it for other things too. So I'm just going to go through where I lost my circles and kind of redefine them. But still that beautiful pattern is underneath and I like that too. Okay, now I've got my circles back. And I will lift that up and, and uh, see what I've got. And everything's kind of sticking, so you have to be careful that you don't lift up other uh, layers. It, it, that's why it's really good to let things dry. And now what I'm going to do is, uh, I should wait for that to dry. Really, this takes patience. This is the part where I don't have a lot of. <laughs> so I'm going to try to dry. Here we go. Oop, no heat. Turn low setting. And I'll just give that a, give that a little bit of time. Okay, I really like this when that happens. So I think I'm going to use that crayon for, um, we'll do that in another session if we have crayons. If you have crayons, we can do that. So now I'm going to take some yellow because the yellow is really delightful and fun. And I'm going to take, I've got some other circle motifs here. I think the circles are kind of fun. I'm just going to put on, I'm going to go here where I can go wherever I want. So I can just, maybe I'll go on this side like that. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just take some yellow. This is a Heimadazalone I'm a yellow. Never, never, I don't use that very often. But it's, an, it's a good yellow. 
I've got my little dome thing and I'm going to just go very lightly into the circle shapes and it's going to create a new color wherever I'm going here, but I think it's going to be fun. These are transparent. Now, if I want to go opaque, it's going to cover up and it, uh, that'll happen later. I'm going to start doing some opaque, more opaque colors in a little bit. But first, I'm just going to get the transparent colors first. And I've got my yellows, maybe just a touch of this orange. Oh, I've got some already on my palette. Might as well use it. And just touch it, you know, just a little bit of touch of orange. Oop, that dried already. <laughs> but still, I'm able to get some of the orange in there. And if I have any leftover colors on anything, this is the time to do it. So let's see what I, let's see what that looks like. All right, I see it. It looks really pretty. I see some nice yellow things going on. Now you can also brush on things. You don't have to just do stencils. You could just brush on, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, I got this thing. I like this pattern. I thought that was really cool. So I'll lay it on the top. And oh, what can I use? Let's see. I think I'm going to try. This is a, oops, I just got some blue in that. I was going to try some quinacridone gold. It might be really pretty. I'm just going to open this up and try it. And if it looks like terrible, then I'll stop. <laughs> so it's fun to just try different colors and see how they work. And I'm going to just tap it, same thing like I did. This time I may be just doing it in spotty sections here and there. It doesn't have to be the whole stencil. I'm just going to just see what it looks like with that. Let's see. Yeah, it makes a beautiful pattern. So you can see there's some patterns. And because it's white underneath, I can see how this is coming along, which is really good. And I'm just going to try this little. I see it's some heart shapes in this thing. I think are really cool. So I'm going to take some mauve. It's called mauve. I'm going to bring this heart shape right up here because I just love it. Maybe up in here. And I'm going to, you know, Valentine's Day is coming. So it might be fun to... Now, this has got a little mix of that yellow, but I don't think it'll be a problem. I'm going to do some, just a little bit of tapping of color with this mauve color right in that, right in here. I love this, these, um, these stencils that have a rut, like an interesting pattern edge, I think are really interesting. So here's a little bit going. There's a beautiful pattern. I love that. So I'm going to bring that pattern up here as well. So I'm going to just like right there. So I'm going to bring that and do another tapping. Purple would look pretty too. I just didn't have any purple in my stash. I could make some. I suppose I can make some out of magenta and phthalo blue. Just fun, just creating layers. But I'm still keeping in mind that I do want to leave some white areas. You know, areas that haven't been or haven't been touched with paint. Yeah, so let's see how that looks. Ooh, that's pretty. So now I still see my circles are under there. Um, but I'm pretty, I think it's getting there. Uh, maybe I'll do a little more color on this side. I love that. I think maybe I'll try a little bit. What color would look like this? I think I'm gonna just put some of that mauve right in this corner here and right over down here. Since I have it left over, just a little bit. So that kind of filled that in on the edges. So now that's done, and I'm going to take my little thing off, pop it in the water. Um, now I'm getting ready to do some brush work, which you could have done. You can do that too, just brush work. You don't need to have anything fancy. So I see these circles still there, and I really like that. I'm going to start, though, with maybe taking some teal. Um, this is a very opaque color, so it's going to cover up. So I'm not going to use this much as far as I'm not going to cover the whole plate with it. I just wanted some little accents and that will look pretty when the lights are off, but then it will be opaque when the sun hits it. So I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to just do like a little marks like this on my plate. And I'm trying to keep it thin. I don't want to be globs of paint. I'm just going to go right Kind of like in a little cascade, like it's raining teal or something. 
and I could do, I like that. I think it's a pretty combination. It kind of adds some contrast to the piece. And I'm going to let that, I've got to let that dry before I do the next thing. Actually, I don't. <laughs> I just realized I don't. I don't need to make that dry. Now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to do some black. I've got my black. So we're almost done. I'm almost done with this because I'm liking the way it looks. So I'm just going to take some black. Yeah. I'm just going to choose some little uh, lines around. It's not sticking very well to where the, um, that's interesting, where the wax crayon was. It's not sticking at all. That's interesting. So I didn't want it to be dripping with water because it's not going to, it's not going to work. It's just going to bead right off of the uh, plate. So you want to kind of keep your paints undiluted as possible. So that is going to be the way it's going to be there. But now that I'm going to put it, now I'm going to find my circles. I'm going to go around my circles just a little bit. I'm going to make some marks around like this. And I'm going to just kind of paint on it. So this is what the beauty of these is you can paint on these jelly plates. You don't have to have fancy stencils. Yeah, now I wanted to make that thick. So I've got those beautiful lines going through. That's going to take a little time to dry. And it's important that I let the, the layer dry. Before we do the final step, there's going to do one more little thing with the turquoise because I forgot I had that. I wanted to, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I'll do something. Maybe I'll put some, my fingerprints or something on it. I'm going to, I'm just going to put my finger right in it. <laughs> there we go. I'm just going to do like bump, little dots with my fingers. Just right there like that. On, on the other side of of the uh, teal. So I've just used my finger as a brush. And what nice what comes in handy are baby wipes. Of course, we all know that, hopefully. So this is really going to stain. <laughs> my, the turquoise is going to stain. <laughs> all right. Now I got to wait for that to dry. Um, another last step I could do is I could take a, another, like a wide brush. Um, got this pretty blue or just a brayer let's try the brayer since I've got it I've got this beautiful it's kind of it's called aqua blue and it's very opaque so I don't want to do too much but I'm going to try to simplify the design a little bit so I'm going to put a little bit of aqua blue on my brayer I'm going to use a shorter brayer this time just to make um, a different mark I'm going to use my little brayer and then I'm also going to use a, a comb so grab that just use one of those my little rubber foams if I can find it here. Stash. Where are you? So I have one of these. I have a bunch of stuff, but I don't know where I could I don't know what happened to it. So I'm just gonna put a little, like a little, just to kind of break it up a little bit. I'm gonna put a little color like right in there, here, and maybe there. Three places, why not? Or I could go. Four and five. Whoa, that's kind of fun. So while it's wet, because I do want to still, I want to put some lines through that. Just while it's still wet. Oops, not really letting me, is it? It dried really fast. So when you're doing these lines, just put a lot of um, color. I mean, do it while it's wet, and probably a wider comb would have been better than that. Or even if you have a piece of cardboard or something, to you can draw um, lines into it. But it's dry already, so forget it. It looks fine. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it. So this is where I need to dry. Now it's time. If you've done some layers, you know, gotten some patterns, colors, and now it's time to just really make sure it's 100% dry before we go to the next step. So take some time to dry. And however, I'm going to get every bit totally dry. is dry enough at this point but that's so this is and if you can always lift up your plate if you want to just check 
and see how see-through it is and if it's really how the desired look. So I'm going to just lift, lift it up in the air and I like it. Having that, uh, the black really makes a difference in the design, the overall design. Um, you could, because you can see the, the look of it. I might just, I think it needs, it's asking for something else. So I'm going to do, <laughs> not done yet. <laughs> so I'm going to just take a little, maybe these. Okay, so I've got these little patterns. I like those. I'm going to put one right here. And I'm going to put some color, but I don't know what. Maybe, hmm, maybe some of that turquoise that I had put out. There it is. I think that's turquoise. Something is right there, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to grab a little, another one of those um, spongy things. And I'm going to grab a little dome. And then just see what color that is. That's my turquoise. Yes, that's what I wanted. So I'm going to dab a little turquoise because I think it just needs that. It's sort of asking for contrast. So we'll just see. We'll get some contrast right in there. A little circle, like a pie, like a nice little design that kind of tops it off. I like that. We'll see how see it makes a big difference. I just like that. I think that really helps. It was asking for something. So you add, we ask and receive. Okay, so there's another one right there. It's a little bigger. And this is my final layer. I promise. <laughs> so here, I'm just going to go all the way to the edge of that. And now I'm going to lift it and I'm going to have a nice little contrasty pattern. Same with this one. I'll put a, probably this, this size here. Maybe that size, this little one right there. And just dry. The drier, the better. Right there. Kind of looks like an airbrush. You know, it feels, it kind of has that look to it, like a little airbrush. This is a smaller one. Little airbrush. And that's how these foam brushes really give that effect. It's amazing. One more. I'm going to do a big one right there in this corner. Like that. Yeah, that finished it off. That's what it needed. It was screaming, saying, help me, I need some pattern, <laughs> something. So but there you go. And I'm taking my time. You know, it should be, I'm not going to worry about it being 100% dry because I'm going to put my tape. My tape, though, will seal, you know, whatever you're, when you're putting your tape on it, you're going to seal it in. So if it is wet, like my little fingerprints aren't wet, that's good. It should be okay. It's dry to the touch, so I'm okay. Now we're going to take our either our contact paper something sticky clear and sticky and the real important thing is to get if you have any paint on your hands wipe that off because it will transfer to your tape so now i'm going to put it over and i want it to be fit right i can start in the middle but i really wanted to make sure i cover that i'll start right i hope it covers it might not be long enough so i'm going to sit this over here i don't think i cut it i'm just going to sit it right next to this and that's um i'm just going to make sure it's longer than my art my painting I'm going to make it there. I think I got it now. Okay. I'm just going to set that down. And now I'm going to start right in the middle. Since I have only packing tape, I don't have... I'm just going to put it in the middle, lay it right in the middle, and I'm just going to lay it on top. I'm going to not get my fingers on the paint part. You know, just kind of rub it on. And then you're going to take your second piece. I'm going to, the reason I did it in the middle, I think it just it will look better. But if you have the contact paper, you're just going to have to lay it on there and then maybe start from the middle and move out you know to smooth it out i'm going to overlap it just a, like a just a little hair not much but just like not even a 16th of an inch i don't want a gap that's the i don't want a gap between the tape and the uh i just want it to be overlapping just ever so slightly that's enough of that noisy isn't it and make sure it's just i'm just doing a little tiny overlap there we are now my whole plate is covered. Now I'm going to really burnish that down. You can use a barren if you have one. Just burnish it down. If you see any bubbles underneath, pull, you know, just kind of lift, you know. Look at the, just get it so that it's, you cannot see the bubbles. So that it looks really smooth as much. Smooth out any air bubbles you might see. Like I see a nice big bubble there. And if you have your contact paper, I think I can't wait to get my contact paper today and I'll try it. But um, I think this, I love the way the packing tape worked out. 
We can leave this on for a little while, doesn't matter. Um, but I think it's probably going to be good. Hopefully it will lift. If my paints are completely dry, everything should lift right off this plate. So now I'm going to do the lift. Here we go. This, this is the, the magic. So I'm taking my, tape, my tape, and I'm going to just lift it at the corner, and I'm lifting slowly. And if you, you can see, the paint is to completely, all my layers are coming off completely. And I'm going to make sure that all my tape is coming off in one piece, like this piece wants to come separately. So I'm going to just lift this off here. And I don't want my tape to come off in separate sections. So there we go. So now I'm going to lift the whole thing very slowly. I have a little art, artifact here I don't care about. but So just slowly pull it back. And now I've got this really cool transparency, this beautiful art on this clear on my, ta on my tape. Now that probably wasn't a good idea that I folded that because there is some stickiness on this. So just set your plate aside and see, I made a little it buckled because I folded that backwards. Bad girl. <laughs> so I'm going to put that back. And if I needed to, I can just take a pair of scissors, which I'm going to grab a pair of scissors. It's still sticky on this side. So just be aware. You can uh, take your, pay, your scissors and just cut off the excess tape or anything that's in the way. Just cut it off. Um, but just don't really touch that inside yet. Just going to cut off the edges just because they're getting in the way. And then I'll show you the next step. Really simple. Because we're really done with the transparency. I mean, we're done with the sun catcher, whatever it's going to be for you. If it's a steel little stained glass sun catcher thing, I just want to get that out of the way. This little edge, this little piece that I folded over, thinking I was really going to save some time, but I didn't. Oh, well. This is how we learn of getting that excess off. And then I'll take that excess over here off, just so that I have my 5 by 7 piece. Where the, where the edge of the artwork ends. A little bit's cut off, but it won't matter. And here. And now I'm not going to worry about the other piece because it's not causing any problems. And I'm going to take my acetate. If you have a clear page protector, whatever you've got, let's see if I can find my acetate. I know it's somewhere I had it. It's somewhere there it is. All right. So this is the piece I cut pre-cut to the same size as the artwork. I'm just going to lay it right on top because it's going to be sticky. You got to be careful when you're doing it. You can lay it however you want to position it. But you want to have it cover your artwork. And it's still, <laughs> it's one of those things that the tape wants to grab it. So just lay it on. And then once you got it laid down, now it's way too, whoops, too, I think I might have, oh, I'm okay. I'm not, I haven't lifted off any color. Oh, lucky me. Um, I'm trying to get this position, and because I'm not putting my head completely over, I'm trying to save you from having to see the top of my head, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut that edge off because that's the pesky edge. This little edge has some sticky to it, and it's just making me crazy. So I'm going to take that off. Go away. <laughs> now I could do this on a, a cutting board with a exacto knife. I can do that. Uh, the scissors are going to be fine. And this would be fun with any shape, like whatever you want to do. Um, this is very, it's a very uh, oops, versatile way to create layers and you can see through both sides. All right, there we go. Now I can just, maybe I'll just lay it on top of it. <laughs> so I want the wrong side to be on top. And that's a little bit easier. I'm able to see it better that way. Here, and I'm going to just start moving from the center outward. And that is going to stick my transparent piece onto the, um, it's going to stick it pretty well. So you can see there's two layers to this. I love this layer. This would be the layer that will stick, stand out. And I'll show you quickly how I did the frame. So I've got this frame and probably I need to clean the glass. So what I'm going to show you is kind of a loose way. Now this needs glass cleaning, so I'm not going to assemble it permanently, but because the glass is just filthy. But the way I did it is you take all the little, take the frame apart. You've got a wood backing. You're not going to use that. You take that out, gone. 
And then I'm going to take out the little thing here. Now it's always good to clean the glass. But yeah, it's really dirty. I don't you can I don't know if you see that. It's filthy. But I won't do it today. I won't bore you with that. So let's say you're ready to do your thing. You put your piece down onto the frame, tape it, and then you know, take a look at it, make sure it's the way you like it. Yes, I love it. Um, and then once it's taped and you have everything inserted, what I did to really hold everything down was I made these little pieces. These are um, out of chipboard, you know, it's like a kind of a thick cardboard. I'll show you how I, what I did <clears throat> so you can make one for yourself. I, I did four corners into the corners. These, these all frames always have these little slats, like um, grooves on the inside. See how it just went right in the groove? And I'm going to do that on all four corners. That tape sticking to my finger. So all four corners get the groove that, and then I taped that down afterwards. So I'm, you know, all this gets taped, but I'm not doing it because of the dirty glass. But I would just secure this with little bits of tape on all four corners, and take this, and then secure a little bit with tape. And wherever my fourth one is, I know it's somewhere. There it is, and a little tape like that and then i used um one on this side but i make sure that it's not wider than my mat that's there that's why it's good to have a, a frame with a mat and i tape that that secures it now to hang i just cut a piece of cardboard punch two holes and i strung some strings so you can just take a little um you know whatever you, string you've got and you string it first like this Tie a knot or a decorative knot if you want the, the knot to be showing. Well, you know, it's up to you on that. I'm just going to tie a normal slip knot. Won't go anywhere. And now there's my hanging thing. But if I don't want to show the knot, I just have it hanging like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in to the spot up here in that little slot. And I'm going to tape, same thing, tape the both sides down. And now you have a hanging, something to hang your frame with and it all sticks in here's the show here's the one that's finished so you'll see how it all stuck together and you can see I just taped it and it's not pretty and if you wanted to cover that up like you were giving this away of course covering it up would take away the uh, transparency but if you want it to look good on both sides then you can maybe you know hit it with a little black paint or something probably a better maybe some black masking tape would look probably a little bit more finished but there it is, and it holds the glass in without the backing. So there it is, and I just think these are so much fun. I'm hoping you can use these up. Now also, you know, now you've got this. So let's say you don't want to put it in a frame. You can use this in a journal page. We, I think this would be a fun thing. You can cut out a window in one of your journals and have this like in between two pages. So cut out two windows, mount this in between the two pages, and now you've got like a stained glass Kind of thing and you can have something underneath that people could see when they're turning the page like if you know text or whatever um so this would be a really fun way to just create some interesting interest in your other mixed media stuff so this is on one side and this is the other side there it is so